I think the most important thing to realize first of all is that there is no one size fits all solution. Everyone is gonna have to combat this from a different stance and from a different place. Um, what you wanna do is reduce food at the highest energy level. So the first thing would be for us to stop reducing food waste, for all, all food to be consumed by humans. Um, this can be um, accepting a doggy bag at a restaurant and taking the leftovers home with you. If you have leftover grilled vegetables, try incorporating them into an omelet the next day. It requires a lot of creativity, but it can be really fun and it can be a challenge. Um, second, after feeding all humans is feeding animals. This can be in terms of livestock on big farms, or it can just be handing your dog your leftover chicken scraps that you don't want from dinner under the table. After humans and then animals, then we're feeding the earth, which would be compost. This is one of the most important things that I would recommend for individuals wanting to make a difference in food waste. If you look up how to compost, it's so easy. I'm sure Shipley does something or has talked about it. Um, but basically you can take all of your food scraps that you're not gonna eat in, except for meat really. And you mix them together with yard debris, things like that in your backyard. And then you can create really rich soil and help start the food process all over again. After all of those steps, then food still isn't waste. Waste is really a subjective term when you think about it because it's not useless at any point. Once you've gotten past those top three um, places, then you go to anaerobic digestion and it can be used to generate energy, like biofuel. I, I don't know if you guys have talked about alternative energy yet or not, but really those there are so many different ways that food can be used it should never ever be sent to landfill. So anything that you can do to decrease the amount of food sent to landfill is perfect, keep doing that. One of the things I found interesting at the beginning of this process when I was meeting with one of the interviewees was that they said they actually tried to set up a, this, I was speaking with the owners of Too Good To Go, that app that reduces waste in the city. And they tried to set up a U.S. marketplace, but they couldn't because they couldn't find a place for themselves in the U.S. value chain. And that's because our social structures are a little bit different. They have a welfare state there and everything is sort of naturally a little bit more equal and evenly distributed. Um, and in the U.S., we have a lot of charities instead. So all of the food that Too Good To Go, that app would have been collecting in the U.S., it doesn't happen. It's going to churches or um, food banks instead. So they couldn't really find a direct way to come into the U.S. just because our social structures were different. Mm -hmm. And I think there are a lot of things like that that will make um, transferring Denmark's initiatives to the U.S. difficult. That being said, we can learn a lot from them and we can find different ways to bring that over. Um, like restaurants having a back door. I don't know if everybody knows what I'm talking about. It was referenced in the documentary, but that is absolutely doable. And there's no reason why we can't have restaurants selling leftover food for discount at the end of the day. There's no reason. Um, restaurants will make more money. We will save food. It will help the environment. It's a, a great, thing to do all around. And I think um, we just need to spread the news, the word of that, because not many people think to do that for some reason.